Today, we are here to teach you about bed bugs, how to identify them, and some simple things you can do to protect yourself against them. You know, when you leave here, you should have enough information to take care of yourself and uh, find out if you have bed bugs early enough to get rid of them. Early detection is the key. If you find them early, then there's not a lot of trouble getting rid of them. If you wait, you got to throw away all your furniture, right, mm -hmm. and a whole lot of other stuff. So early detection is key. So y'all going to learn how bed bugs look from an egg to the adult. <clears throat> so that's the adult bed bug. Bed bugs are small wingless insects feed mainly on humans. They can survive off rats, bats, cats, dogs, but they prefer humans because we don't have a lot of fur. They have easy access to our skin. Feed solely upon blood. Colors range from white to burnt orange. You can actually see them with your eyes, as big as the apple seed. Harbor plague and hepatitis B, but do not transmit. That means they do not transmit diseases to humans. So if somebody stayed in a hotel with hepatitis B and a bed bug bit them, and you came two days later and that same bed bug bites you, you won't get hepatitis B. They don't transfer diseases to humans. That's why they are not a health risk, they are a nuisance pest. A nuisance. Bed bugs cannot fly. <laughs> However, if you have enough of them in your house, you think they flying, running, jumping, and everything else. Because they can take over the whole house. Small 3 16th of an inch, oval, flat, reddish, three segments, thin coat, fine golden hairs. Y'all can see a lot of pictures of them so y'all know. Uh, give off a musty odor. I have never smelled the odor. But they have dogs now trained to detect bed bugs. So some office buildings, apartment buildings, they bring a dog in maybe once or twice a year and they take them through the whole building. If they detect bed bugs, then they have it treated because some people have bed bugs and don't report, especially to the management. You know, and I know most apartment buildings will provide treatment if you report it, and some people don't, you know. Blood, fecal matter. Anybody ever seen a lot of roaches? I'm the only one. <laughs> all, all that black stuff they leave on the wall, that's their poop, that's fecal matter. Bed bugs leave the same thing. So you can actually see evidence of bed bugs before you see the bed bugs. Bed bugs are mostly active at night, if you catch them early. But if you let them multiply and multiply, you'll see them all times of day. Males have a pointed abdomen, females have a rounded. That's the adult male. If they were that big, we'd really be in trouble. It's like a scary movie. That's the adult female. Anybody know what asexual mean? I didn't know it either, but I found out. Okay. And it means that you can reproduce without a mate. There's insects out there that can reproduce without a mate. So that means that mean they can somebody can drop a female bed bug off in your house and they have babies, but that's not true. Bed bugs need a mate. So if somebody dropped off a female bed bug in, in this room or this building, and if it wasn't pregnant, it couldn't could not reproduce. It could bite you, but it couldn't reproduce. Different images of bed bugs, like they don't jump and they don't fly. They can crawl very quickly. And the way to get from one house to another house is through the cracks in the walls, through the pipe chases, where the wires go. You know, now we're hearing about bed bugs in row houses. You know, uh, somebody called and said, my neighbor had bed bugs in the house. I spent $4,000 and I still got them because they don't do anything, you know. So they can spread from apartment to apartment, house to house, and, and uh, start infestation. So we had a couple of bed bug summits when they first came back a couple of years ago. And what you have to do first, because when they came back, nobody knew what they were. 
You know, the only thing people knew was sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. You know, that's the only thing. That's the only thing I knew. You know, and but they came back. People didn't know. That's why they were allowed to take over apartment buildings. Some apartment buildings they completely infested because they didn't know what to do. They were ignorant. The, the traditional treatments don't work, you know, so they were allowed to multiply and then they start spreading, you know. People go visit, people take stuff, people have bed bugs, they throw their mattress away and somebody come and get it, you know, and take it home and all that stuff and they, and they're everywhere. Hospitals, nursing homes, the Odyssey centers, they showing up everywhere. My office, my, not my office, my office building. They went at my desk, not yet. So can anybody see what that is? Probably can. It's a Phillips head screw. And it's in a headboard of somebody's bed. And what you're looking at that you don't know right now are eggs. That's an egg, that's an egg, that's an egg. Those eggs are easy to kill. You can take a, a rag and wipe them out, a bucket of water and wipe them out. You know, but the problem with bed bugs, they're easy to kill, but they're hard to find. That's because the, they hide real good. So that's the actual size of a bed bug. So where did bed bugs come from? Because I never heard about them, you know. Um, they were gone for a long time, but they were here almost at the beginning. You know, they came, came out of caves when humans came out of the caves. They weren't called bed bugs back then because they didn't have beds, but they, the bugs, the, the, that's the Spanish word for bed bugs. Right. So you can find bed bugs in religious writing. You know, they talking about bed bugs. When we wrote on the wall in caves, you saw the little bugs on the wall by the people. Those were bed bugs, you know. So back in the day, when we travel on ships, and we still do, but when we travel on ships, they didn't let people bring a lot of stuff on the ships because they feared the more stuff they had, the more of a chance they had to bring bed bugs, you know. So that's a nurse. Y'all remember when nurses used to dress like that? So that's a nurse, and that, that nurse is spraying a hospital bed with DDT. DDT worked real good. You know, DDT uh, it killed all the bed bugs, basically. Uh, uh, um, and they found out DDT was harmful to humans. Not only did it kill the bed bugs, it was killing people too. So they banned it, and you can no longer buy it. But before that happened, it basically got rid of all the bed bugs in the United States. So that's a nurse spraying the bed. And so in the mid-50s, Basically, all the bed bugs were gone, you know. That's a truck spraying DDT on the beach with children playing. That's before they knew it was harmful to humans. And, and in the 30s and 40s, you can go to the drugstore, the, the uh, grocery store, and anywhere and buy DDT, you know. But it did help us to kill the bed bugs. But they banded it, and years later, increased travel. When we didn't have bed bugs, they had bed bugs in other countries, you know. And now we are traveling a lot, you know, and we're going from here to there. And you notice all that luggage together, you know. And, and some countries that y'all hear about the Victoria's Secret in New York that had bed bugs, right? And the library and the, but when when I heard that, what I came to my mind is that they were shipped in. Yeah. They probably made those clothes someplace else and shipped them in because they are in other countries. Some countries, you know, they say, what's the big deal? You know, they, but we, you know, uh, um, but it is a big deal. And some of those people live here now. You know? <laughs> so how do they get from the luggage? Because we first started hearing about them in hotels. So people stayed in hotels and they called the health department. Y'all know y'all call the government for everything, right? Yeah. Y'all get a mouse in your house, call the mayor, you know? Yeah. So <laughs> people start getting them in hotels, they call the health department, 
At that time, I didn't know anything about bed bugs. So when we noticed the increase, they sent me to study the bug. And when I came back, <laughs> our position now is aggressive outreach and education. And that's why we're here. You know, because people didn't know about bed bugs. That's how they were allowed to take over. And our position is if we teach people to identify them and some simple things y'all could do, then you can help yourself and help everybody else. So what happened, hotels had them. Hotels don't want anything to do with bed bugs. It's bad for business, you know. So they throw the mattress away. They clean the room. Sometimes they take the carpet up. They take the curtains down. They call a professional. And I spoke to a lady that worked in a hotel, a pricey hotel, and she said they did all of that, and they took the mattress out. Before they can get back in the building, the mattress was going up the alley. You know, so somebody got that mattress, took on, because hotels got nice mattresses, you know, so, so if you don't get anything from this today, if you see a mattress, a chair, a sofa on the curb, leave it there. <laughs> you know, some, some cities and states now have laws that if you throw away a mattress because they have bed bugs, you have to label it in Spanish and English that it has bed bugs or either destroy it, cut it, or throw some paint on it. You know, um, we are starting to catch up with bed bugs. If you call DPW for a bulk pickup and it's a mattress, they tell you to wrap it in plastic before they pick it up. You know, people call us and say, I just bought a brand new mattress and I got bed bugs. You know, how'd that happen? You know, so, so just think about it. When you get a new mattress, what they do with the old mattress? Put it on the truck. Put it on the truck. With the other furniture. That's exactly right. <laughs> and it's a good possibility they can spread. So now furniture stores, now when they take mattresses out, they wrap them in plastic. You know, like I said, we starting to catch up with bed bugs. Most abundant room where people sleep, if you catch them early. If you don't, they can be all over. And one of the reasons that, that uh, um, we're here is because my office is around the corner. People brought baby bugs there. You know, um, schools, they bring baby bugs there. The nursing home, they took baby bugs there. You know, they was checking in a, a senior, and he had a prosthetic leg. So y'all know the rest. You know, so it, it, it's just sad. You know, I got a call from Reverend Judy this morning about a senior, 80 something years old, got some medical problems and had bed bugs. Mm -hmm. You know, and they want some help. You know, does the city have any money to help with these bed bugs? And the short answer is no. You know, but the city does provide education, some things that you can do to help yourself in what we're doing today. You know, because what we tell people works. You know, when people call us, they crying and all this stuff, they got these bed bugs, they bite my children, all, I don't know what to do. And we take a few minutes to tell them what to do. And they'd be so happy, they ain't having killed one bed bug, but they'd be so happy with the information and they know they can do something to help themselves. They had most active at night hiding, bed frames, mattresses, clutter provides hiding places. If you have a lot of stuff in your house, if you have a treatment, then it's hard to get the bed bugs because they got hiding places everywhere. So if you got a lot of stuff, you know, when you live a long time, you accumulate a lot of stuff. You don't want to throw it away. Me too. I'm guilty. You know, I be looking at stuff to take you to church say, nah, nah. And I know I'm not going to ever wear it again. <laughs> but if you have to, and you just want to keep stuff that your grandkids gave you and all that stuff, put it in a container. You know, they have containers. They have them all sizes. They have small ones, big ones. They have a store. Container. They better than big ones. Mm -hmm. But they have all sizes. They have clear ones. If you want, you can walk past and look at your stuff every now and then. You know, so reduce clutter. Several species and sensitivity. 
what they do is they they bite you and they numb the area so they might bite you a couple of times some bite marks are a little cluster and some of them are a row on your line on your arm or, or your leg you know uh, um, some people have severe reaction some people don't have any reaction you know so that means a husband and a wife can sleep in the same bed and one of them have a reaction and one of them don't you know um and the reason why i know is a reporter from the city paper she did a, a, a article a piece on bed bugs and what prompted her to do it is she said every time i go over my boyfriend's house and spend the night i have bite marks on me she said one day i pulled the cover up and found the bed bugs you know they weren't bothering him you know and she did a good article and and and, and hopefully some people got some good information from it the so social stigma some people don't report bed bugs because they think people want to think they dirty you know and that's not the case bed bugs do not discriminate you can be poor you can be rich you can be black you can be white green so they don't discriminate as long as you have blood that's all they want so that's a, a feeding jar a ring jar so it's a doctor that had baby bugs and studied baby bugs, Dr. Harlan, you know, and so baby bugs are in that jar, and it's a thin cover that they can bite through. So he lets the baby bugs bite them and suck the blood. I don't like baby bugs that much, you know, but somebody got to do it, you know, better him than me. So that's the immediate reaction, the cluster, the little cluster. Or they bite you several times because they have to find a blood vessel. Oh. And sometimes they don't get it on the first bite. And they might have to bite you more times. Like you go to the doctor and they don't draw the blood the first time, they got to stick you again. Same thing with baby bugs. Some people have severe reaction. Sometimes they have to go to the hospital. You know, and they don't spread disease, but you can get a secondary infection by scratching. So if you get bed bug bites, you get bed bug bites, warm, soapy water. That's the best, you know, because medication sometimes make it dry and make you want to scratch it. Warm, so soapy water. Delay reaction. Some people get bit and don't get a reaction till 24 hours later. You know, some people come in D.C. and stay in a hotel and they get bit, and then they go home, and they get the reaction, and they call us. I stayed in this hotel, and I got bit, and I got this pancake-looking bite mark. Bed bug infests only a small uh, portion of your house, again, if you catch them on time. Bedroom, sleeping early, so if you got a reclining chair, you know, you spend a lot of time in, that's a good possibility. You know, folds and creases of bed linens, the mattress, um, curtains, wallpaper, everywhere. Light switches, light outlets, ceilings, everywhere. So those are some images. That's an egg. You can, that's enlarged, but you can actually see them with your eyes, like the ones in the screw that you saw earlier. So you can actually see them, especially against a dark surface. You know, they like to attach their eggs to a wood surface, but they will uh, attach them to metal or nest in a metal bed. And that's the fecal matter, the poop, the eggs, and the bed bugs all in one place. Can anybody see what this is? I know y'all can't. That's a wall socket. Beside the wall socket, is a blood smear where somebody was smashing bed bugs and killing bed bugs on the wall, you know. And that's somebody with a flashlight looking for bed bugs. And we have some flashlights for it, looked like a small crowd, everybody gonna get something. <laughs> so, 
we had some flashlights for door prizes, and we, you know, that what you use to look for bed bugs in the cracks and stuff, because we know they hide in the cracks, so you best to have a flashlight and look in the little cracks. And it's a product that we recommend that you can use that's non-toxic, and I'll show it to you in a minute. So that's a heavy infestation. Now that's a, a box spring. That's a box spring at the bottom. So under that dust cover, if bed bugs get in there, then then it's hard to get rid of them if they get in that mattress in the box spring. We don't recommend throwing mattresses away or box springs because I don't think people have money to just go out and buy new mattresses. But we do recommend that you invest in a mattress cover or a box spring cover, encasements. So not the plastic kind, they got cloth kind, cork cloth, and you put the mattress in and zip it up. And we, we have some for door prizes. You zip it up and then it has a little hook so the zipper won't open. And if baby bugs are in there, they will die and they can't bite you. And if they come from another part of the room, they don't have that hiding place because you eliminated it. They can still get in the covers? In the they covers, yes. Zip it, but zip it up. No. No, they, they, they can't get in the mattress oh, okay. or the box spring. Oh, okay. You know, that's where they hide at and that's where they breathe. So that's another sad story. We hear all the sad stories, and it always has something to do with a senior or a child. So this bed belongs to a 90-year-old lady. This lady lived in Upper Wisconsin Avenue in a luxury apartment building, and she 90, but she was mobile. She'd get up and go, and she got up and went one time, and her neighbors saw water bottles on the floor. You know how they deliver water? So he went and reported it to the desk, and they thought it was a leak. So they sent the maintenance people up, and that's what they found. You know? So I said, how did she look? You know, they said she had a couple of bites on her. You know, so it was three fire stations that I know uh, that had baby bird infestation. How that happen? How that happen? So if she called the fire department, the ambulance, they go in and, and help her. They go in with the little bag, you know, they be pimping the little bag, and then they set the bag down on the bed. What's gonna happen? So I'm proud to say, I did this presentation for the fire department. And now they have it on their mandatory training. So they have to look at this, and at the end, they have a test. Y'all want to take a test? No. I, I know y'all don't. <laughs> you said no. Yeah, I know y'all don't. But, but they have to take a test. So, you know, they learn the information because they have to protect oh, themselves too. The police, you know, all these people that go nurses, social workers, home health aides, all these people that help us. You know, when we get to a certain age or a certain physical condition, they have to come in our house and help us. They are at risk, so they have to protect themselves. So that's the first place I saw bed bugs. This is a hostel, and it's on, in town, in downtown, and this is where international students stay. So they come and they stay, and so, and this was like 12 years ago, and they got bit and they called the health department, and they said, um, can somebody check it out? So me and my supervisor, we went to check it out. So we went and got there, and this is the first thing I saw. Clean, no, not this, this. So, so in my mind, because I didn't know anything about bed bugs at that time, in my mind, I thought it had to do with hygiene. It had to do with dirt and hygiene, you know, but, this room is not dirty, you know, and this room doesn't have any clutter. But, so I asked my supervisor, say, why are we here? He said, let's turn the beds over. We turned the beds over, and all of this was in these corners. So if you ever do a bed bug inspection or have somebody come in your house and do an inspection, make sure they turn that frame over and look in those four corners. 
you know, because that's the perfect hiding place. You do all that other stuff and you don't do that, and then two weeks later, you say, that's the baby bird's back. And in fact, they never left. So if somebody come in your house to do an inspection, make sure, don't, they, don't let them out until they turn that bed over. <laughs> Just different images of bed bugs. Yeah. Extermination, we starting to catch up with them. They have different treatments. They have heat treatments. They have cold treatments. They have chemical treatments. They have non-chemical treatments. So one company might come and do one thing another company might come and do something totally different. There's no treatment standards right now. So that means that they don't have to follow guidelines in their treatment, you know? And I'm not saying one treatment won't work or another treatment won't work. You know, as long as it works, that's the, the, the point. We want to get the bed, the bed bugs out of the house. So traditional treatments don't work in some cases because we have a lot of stuff you know and then that's not dirt that's not dirty or you know whatever it's just a lot of stuff you know and they tell you if you want to get a bed bug treatment they give you a prep they tell you to take everything out the closet take everything out the drawers wash it put it in bags and then they come in and do the treatment move everything away from the wall and all that stuff and this person has a wheelchair. You think they can do it? No. no. So when I go to buildings, and I think I mentioned it at um, the apartment, when I go to buildings, I tell people, because people have all kinds of conditions, you know, some people, you know, can hit walk, and some people have to walk, or some people need a wheelchair, you know, all stuff. What I tell them, if it's bed bugs and the building is gonna do a treatment, for somebody that can't do the preparation, the ones that can help the ones that can't. Because if you don't, it's a possibility they're gonna to come to your house. The, the containers, that's how they look. I got them too, but uh, um, they work, baby bus can't get in, can't get out. So there's no silver bullet, there's no one thing that you can do for bed bugs, you have to do all of this stuff together. We recommend Sturifab. This is a non-toxic product. Anytime you buy any chemicals over the counter, before you go home and start spraying everything, the dog, the cat, the kids, <laughs> read the label. Yes. Read the label, follow the instructions on the label because yeah. stuff can be dangerous. Yeah. Follow the label. Yeah. This person, I meant him, well, I meant this reporter. This reporter did an article and what prompted her to do her article was she meant this couple. And they from another country, I don't know where, but he brought a second-hand sofa and it had bed bugs. In his country, they use kerosene. Y'all know kerosene kill bed bugs, right? Yeah, but it do some other stuff too. So he got kerosene, he used it three times. The third time, it ignited. That's his hand. He lives in a nursing home because he cannot take care of himself trying to kill bed bugs. So some of the things that you can use, you can use the vacuum cleaner. If you vacuum, you vacuum real good. As soon as you finish, you take the bag out or the container and dispose of it in a plastic bag outside of your house. Because if you vacuum bed bugs up, and you put the vacuum cleaner in the corner, it's possible that they can crawl back out. So you get rid of the bag as soon as you finish, and then you can use spackle or, or caulking and seal up all the little cracks, you know. And if they're in there, you don't have to spray anything. You just seal them in there, and they'll die, you know. Mattress covers, mattress covers. If you don't want to buy new mattresses, mattress encasements. Put the mattress in, zip it up. They have all kinds now. 
So the market dictated the prices, and the prices have came down. At first, you, they cost like $75, you know, they're almost as much as a mattress. Now they are affordable. You can buy them, they sell them in all the, the, um, the stores. Yeah. So these are some things that I'm not recommending, but just showing you what they are doing today. And every day they're thinking of something new because baby bugs are big money. So if you create the, the silver bullet, you might get rich. You know, because they're big one. I remember I went in uh, uh, Home Depot one day and I walked in the door and they had a whole rack of baby bug stuff. They had baby bug powder, baby bug spray, baby <laughs> bug this, gallon sized, all that stuff. You know, uh, and uh, you almost trip over it. You know, baby bugs are big money. So this is a disposable mattress bag, disposable bag. So if you took your mattress out, and it had bed bugs, and what you have to do? You have to drag it through the house, right? Yeah. You drag it through the house, and bed bugs only work out. They fall off all over the house. Right, so put it in the bag, and then take it out. Disposable laundry bag, I got some of those too. But disposable laundry bag, you know, some home health care uh, 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 staff, what they do is one or two things they could do. They can protect themselves or they can get another job. You know, because the people that they help might have baby bugs. It's possible for any one of us in this room, including me, to get baby bugs, you know, if we're not careful. You know, so that's a laundry bag. Some people, the nurses and places and I, I've spoken to, and they say, when I go in the house and I know I have baby bugs, as soon as I get home, I strip at the door and I wash my stuff. High temperatures kill them. That's why they tell you to wash your stuff. Or if you can't wash it, put it in the dryer for 20 minutes. 120 degrees for 20 minutes will kill the bed bugs. So it's a disposable bag. So this company is saying when you strip at the door, put your stuff in this disposable laundry bag and just drop the whole thing in there. Insect interceptors. I don't know if y'all know, a long time ago, they used to put the bed legs in cups of gasoline. Anybody know about that? Then in, then in the South, probably up this way too, but they used to put cups. Y'all know gasoline kill bed bugs too? Right, we don't recommend that neither. <laughs> but, but this company created this. So the idea is you put the bed leg in the middle and you put talcum powder or water inside this outer well. So when the bed bugs come to you, they're attracted to you by the CO2 from your body and the warmth. So they're attracted to you and they come trying to claim up on the bed, they get trapped in here. And this is not the do all, you know, that's letting you know you have bed bugs and you gotta do something else, you know, but you put this on all four legs and we got some for a door prize too. We have the newer kind. You don't have to put water in it. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so y'all heard about people traveling in hotels and stuff and getting bed bugs and people are scared and all that stuff, you know, and checking the mattress. I go travel with my wife and check that mattress, you know, and and um, because that's possible. You can put your stuff down in bed bugs and get in your luggage and take it home. Yeah, people that travel a lot, they know that. You know, sometimes they don't even take this stuff in the house. They take the stuff out the suitcase and put it in the bag and wash it, you know. So this company said, no, just put your luggage in this plastic bag, zip it up when you're not using it. Baby bugs can't get in. You know, I heard, I read some stuff on the internet that they were telling people to put the suitcase in the bathtub, you know, so baby bugs won't, you know, get in. But let me tell you, hotels are doing a lot better. And what they do is they train their staff. So when they're in there making up the bed and cleaning the room, they also are looking for bed bugs. You know, so if they find them and they'll get somebody, you know, to come out, a professional to come out and take care of it. I looked on the internet not too long ago, I updated to see some stuff out there. And I found this, 
this is a CO2 monitor and trap. So it emanates CO2, something you know similar to CO2. It tracks the bed bugs, and they get trapped in here. And then you know you got bed bugs, and you got to do something. Remember, it's a monitor. So it's a pack type. Some dialysis centers have these, and they have all sizes. So when their patients come in for treatment, you know, they have to sit on that bed for a long time, you know, and they see the bed bugs on them, you know, and they don't want to turn them away. They take their clothes while they're doing the treatment, and they put them in a pack tight. And what happens is when you turn it on, it heats up to 120 in the bug, and it kills the bed bugs. So when they come back out, they don't have bed bugs. That helps them in the clinic, but the real problem is at the home, you know. So this, they call them zip bag, oven bags, you know, the same uh, uh, principle. You put the stuff in, zip it up, cut it on, give you a high kill the bed bugs. Room size, you can do a room, room, room at a time. They, are, they have them for cars now, that you can drive a car in and close it up, you know, because when seniors travel, how do they travel most of the time? Metro access, mm -hmm. those vans, battles, and all those transportation places, mm -hmm. you know. And so we know, we know just like the lady that went to this dialysis center and had baby bugs on her, it's a possibility that she can in the van, she can leave some there, you know. So they have things that you can put a car in, turn it on, kill the bed bug, pull the car out. In the door, there's a door. Now I did this, I did this presentation at a senior home. So when I got to this slide, half the room said Rosie. I said, who's Rosie? They said the dog that come near to do the inspection was named Rosie, and this dog looked like Rosie. It might be rosy, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so some of this information came from Harvard School of Public Health, Dr. D.D. Miller and Dr. Harlan, and now today they are experts, superstars in the bed bug world. Anytime you hear about a bed bug, something, something, they are there. And we had them at our summit too. That's my information. Any questions? Yeah, I like the like What about your linen closet? Because you know your linen is out. You fold your towels and sheets and just stick it, put it in your linen closet. Should you put it in bags? Because I see the bags where you get where, uh, like the Ziploc bags. Should you do that? It, it, linen? You could. If you, if you have something in the closet that you're not going to use often, that's, right. that's not a bad idea. She said when bed bugs bite you, rubbing alcohol, rubbing on it immediately. Mm -hmm. So so I have to do this, I have to do a disclaimer. I'm not a medical doctor, so I can't advise you on any kind of treatment. No. But the only thing I can say about bites is use warm soapy water. Mm. Any more questions? To be able. Yeah, like if you bleach the walls, you know, a bleach solution on the walls and the cracks and things like that. Does that if, kill them at all? It might, but if you want to use a, a solution, a cleaning solution, mm -hmm. if it has alcohol, that would work better. Alcohol, yeah. alcohol. Yes. Alcohol looks good. It's a high, like 91 or whatever high it is. See, I can't tell you, I can't I'm tell you, no, 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 you're right, no, but I can't tell you, I can't tell your alcohol, rubbing alcohol, not the liquor store, I can't tell your <laughs> rubbing alcohol kills bed bugs because it does not have a label to tell you how to use it to kill bed bugs, you know, so I can't tell you to use alcohol, even though Sturifab is 60% alcohol, you know, I cannot tell you guys to use alcohol. The only difference between Sturifab and alcohol is you only can buy Sturifab online. So how I many of y'all have a computer? But y'all can use the ones downstairs. But how, and then 
And then, and then you have to have a credit card or a debit card. And then you have to have $39, you know. But I can't tell y'all to use alcohol <laughs> for bed bugs. So, are y'all ready for the raffle? Any more questions? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, what's the temperature the water has to be to get rid of bed bugs on land? 120 in the bug. But but it went on in the water, yeah, 120, but it's like 20 minutes at that temperature.